Our first item of business is to reorganize the board for this uh, upcoming fiscal year. Um, I guess I'm open for nominations. Somebody want to nominate somebody for something? I nominate Steve Boulay for chair. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. I'll nominate Mr. Thomas for clerk. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You want to nominate? I nominate Mr. Rodelakis for vice chair. Any questions or comments? And just have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So the board basically stays the same. Our next item of business is to review and approve minutes. We have no minutes for this month. Our next item of business is to review and sign bills. Uh, quite an extensive list tonight. Um, first one is for Tate and Howard, One Greenbrier Drive for $3,500. Next is McMahon Associates for One Greenbrier Drive, $2,170. Next is for Graves Engineering, One Greenbrier Drive, $1,749. Graves Engineering, 83 Centec Boulevard. Oh, these are site plan reviews, I apologize. I'll back up. So Tate and Howard is for the hydraulic review for One Greenbrier Drive. McMahon Associates for One Greenbrier Drive was for traffic review. Graves Engineering for One Greenbrier Drive was second site plan review. Next item is Graves Engineering, 83 Centec Boulevard for site plan review, $869. Graves Engineering 193 Hartford Turnpike Site Plan Review, $1,764.83. Graves Engineering 195 Main Street Site Plan Review for $1,278. Graves Engineering for 56 to 66 South Quinsigamon Avenue Site Plan Review, $1,317. Graves Engineering for 440 Hartford Turnpike Site Plan Review, $2,445.83. And the final Graves Engineering for Falcon Farm Site Plan Review for $1,924. Total bills to be paid $17,044.66. Do I have a motion? I move that we approve the expenditures as read by the chair. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I should mention, oh, I can get to this in a board member comments in a moment. Okay. When we get to board member comments, I just would like to mention that Mr. Rodelakis is currently not here, but is expected to be here in about an hour or so. And Mr. Rao is absent, absent tonight. Mr. Iliado, Iliadi will be sitting in on any uh, special permits for this evening. Uh, with that, board member comments. Mr. Jerry. I have no comments this month. Thank you. Mr. Thomas. No comments this month, sir. Mr. Cahill. No comments. And other than the comment I mentioned earlier, I have no additional comments. Brings us to our first hearing. It's a new public hearing for proposed bank and retail buildings site plan re, uh, approval for location 195 Main Street. Um, although he's not here, uh, Mr. Rodelakis will be recusing himself from this entire hearing um, going forward. Mr. Thomas, could you please read the legal notice? Choose me planning board. As, special, as the Special Permit Granting Authority will hold a public hearing on Thursday evening, July 14th, 2022 at 7 p.m. in the Selectman's Meeting Room at the Richard D. Carney Municipal Office Building, 100 Maple Avenue, Shrewsbury, Mass. To hear the application of Cornerstone Bank, 230 Park Avenue, Worcester, Mass, 01609, for special permit and site plan approval by the Planning Board to allow for the construction of a retail building and a bank. A special permit is required by the Town of Shrewsbury Zoning Bylaw, Section 6.C, Aquifer Protection Overlay District, and site plan approval is required by the Town of Shrewsbury Zoning Bylaw Section 7.F.3. The proposed development is shown on plans entitled Site Development Plan for 195 Main Street in nine sheets, dated June 13, 2022, prepared by, prepared by J.M. Grenier and Associates, Incorporated, 118 Turnpike Road, Suite 200, South Mass, 01772, Stamped by Todd P. Chapin, PLS, and John M. Grenier, PE. The subject property is located north of Main Street, westerly of Thessalon Drive, and consists in whole or in part of Shrewsbury Assessor's Tax Plate 20, plots 046000. 
A copy of the application and plans may be seen in the Office of the Planning and Economic Development Department at the Richard B. D. Carney Municipal Office Building, 100 Maple Avenue, Shrewsbury, Mass., and on the Planning Board website. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Would the applicant please introduce themselves? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and, and uh, members of the board. Respectfully, my name is Richard Ricker, for the record. Um, I know you know me, but uh, Richard Ricker with, and my law offices are at 11 Maple Avenue. Um, with me tonight is Todd Talman, who's the president of uh, Cornerstone Bank. He's sitting to my right. Uh, also, uh, Peter Brown, uh, who is our uh, Boston counsel for the uh, ZBA appeal, which is ongoing, which I'll mention, uh, we'll, we'll discuss a little bit, I'm sure. Um, and John Grenier, our engineer, is here to discuss the actual plans. Um, I, uh, mindful of the uh, comments of the planning department and uh, Graves, um, I, I, I won't repeat all those things because um, it's not necessary, obviously, but um, I would note that um, uh, I, I think that we've hit most of the points. There are, there are a couple of points that uh, obviously uh, John needs, is going to be addressing. Um, Cornerstone Bank, um, as you know, um, uh, wants to locate in Shrewsbury um, um, for a good reason. It's a good bank. Uh, it's a good community. Um, we're, we all like the community. They do, too. Um, they want to be a good neighbor. Uh, they want to be a good community member. Um, they have a great reputation in other communities. Uh, they participate. Uh, they are a community bank. They're not a large giant bank they are a community bank and and uh, and they play that role well um, they they donate to local causes they participate in local uh, events and, and causes um, uh, they want to do that here in Shrewsbury um, by way of background and how, how we got uh, where we are right now um, we've been to the ZBA as, as you know um, there were um, two special permits that we needed uh, with the ZBA I noted in the planning comments that uh, I was asked to uh, discuss that background. Uh, the special permits were um, one for uh, the alteration of a non-conforming setback, a building that, that had a non-conforming setback. It had a non-conforming setback of, I think, around 68 feet. Um, the uh, setback for the proposed bank uh, oh, was 67 feet. The setback for the proposed bank is uh, one foot less than that, one foot more than that. Um, I get confused on the, um, but one foot more than that, um, and as you are aware, uh, that's allowed by special permit because it is grandfathered as a as a prior non-conforming uh, setback uh, of a structure. Um, so obviously the bank um, would like to continue to use that setback, uh, and this plan is, is utilizing the setback at around 60. Sixty-eight point three feet. Um, the second and, and uh, the ZBA saw fit to um, approve that, um, and um, that is in litigation. Has been litigation for um, just about how many years, Peter? A couple of years. Um, we are. Um, we understand that it is uh, getting to the point where it's uh, going to reach uh, the trial point. Um, uh, as you are aware, we can, at our own risk, move forward uh, while that is pending, and uh, that is our intent, is to uh, try to move things along uh, with the intent that uh, once the ZBA matter is concluded, we can move forward. Uh, the other special permit um, with the ZBA was for the drive-through uh, for a bank. A bank is an allowed use, uh, as you know, in, in uh, this district, uh, but the drive-through requires a special permit. Um, and uh, the ZBA determined that uh, there was no nuisance, there was no, no um, problem, uh, there was no, um, basically, no nuisance value whatsoever to the fact that the bank wanted what is an ancillary use anyway to a bank and what all banks want, which is uh, a drive-through. Uh, so the ZBA uh, did approve that, um, and that's the background for the ZBA action. It's, a, it's two special permits, there were no variances. Uh, just, just the special permits. Uh, so tonight we, we're here for um, obviously a site plan review and, um, and to talk about the aquifer um, and uh, compliance with the aquifer district regulations. Uh, I was pleased to note the comments in the Graves report in that respect, um, and as I'm sure we all are. Um, and with that, uh, perhaps John can get into the plan. 
Thank you again, John Grenier, J.M. Grenier Associates, um, on behalf of the applicant. Um, I think everybody's familiar with this site. Um, it's along Main Street on the westerly section heading towards 290. Uh, St. Vincent's uh, has the spot on number 181 Main Street, which is just adjacent to this parcel. There is an existing structure that has uh, been a business for a, a number of years on this site, so it has been uh, traditionally a commercial use. This site is located within the limited commercial business zoning district <coughs> within the aquifer protection overlay district. Um, the criteria for the aquifer protection overlay district is um, if you have impervious areas greater than 15% on site, you're required to recharge uh, that water back into the ground so that you're putting water back into the aquifer. Um, so what we are proposing, um, it is one structure, um, the connection between the bank structure, which is uh, 1,670 square <coughs> feet located in this location. There is a covered canopy, and that's where the drive-through would be. And attached to that is a, um, another retail building, which is 6,525 square feet located on the westerly side. There is access on the uh, easterly side. There's uh, a 26 foot wide entrance that is two way that gives access into the site. You can loop around the site and then there is a one way exit on the westerly side of the site in this area. So uh, for both the bank use and the uh, retail use, we have adequate parking between um, the, we need one space for every 250 square feet for the retail and then the bank space that is also has parking requirements based on the number of tellers and service, uh, service areas uh, to handle customers. So with that, the total parking required for the site is 48 parking spaces and we're providing 48 parking spaces on site. Um, and those areas are located, there's 20 spaces along the front, frontage. There's another eight spaces located on the easterly side of the bank. Uh, there's another 20 spaces located at the rear portion of the site. And then in front of the other retail space, uh, there are another um, one, two, three, four, five, six parking spaces located in that area. Um, in terms of the drive-through, we have adequate area in queuing locations for cars to queue up going through uh, the drive-through. It would be, as most banks do, there is one drive-up window that is uh, just adjacent to the building, so you're right at the window, and then there is a second, uh, a second queuing line so that you can have uh, one other uh, work area where you can go remotely and service and get serviced by the, by the attendant at the bank. Um, in terms of the, the drainage, as I had mentioned, we're required to recharge runoff into the ground if we're greater than 15%. We are accomplishing that by having two separate subsurface recharge areas one located along the frontage on the easterly side and one at the rear portion of the site uh, on the easterly side as well. So we're capturing both the roof runoff and the, uh, the pavement runoff. We're treating that runoff and then we're recharging that into the ground. We did testing on site with Graves Engineering. Uh, there are actually very good soils. Typically in the aquifer protection zone, you find that there are good, more sandy, uh, gravelly soils, and that is also the case on this site. So we're able to capture all the runoff, keep it more of a flat pad site. We don't have any big open detention basins, um, anything that's unsightly, so we're able to, to accommodate that um, subsurface on, on the easterly side of the site. Uh, in terms of snow storage areas, we have plenty of room for snow storage. Off the front parking area, we have snow storage areas along the frontage. 
Uh, off the back parking, uh, parking row, we have ample snow storage area off the back as well. Uh, so we have plenty of area for snow storage uh, on site. So I don't believe there would be any need for um, trucking snow off site uh, in, in the event of large storm events. Um, the, this project, um, I note, will be, will be phased. So the first phase will be the construction of uh, the bank portion of the building itself. The second phase would be construction of the other retail portion of the building. And it, right now it's the intent to do all of the infrastructure, do all of the pavement, do all of the parking, and just leave this rectangular section that would encompass uh, basically the, the limit of the curbing and the proposed uh, westerly section of the building and that would just be grassed for now. Um, that would be phase two of the project. Uh, the timing on that we're really, we're not sure of at this point, um, but we're coming in with a comprehensive plan so you see what the full build out of the entire site is going to be. Um, one other item that was um, brought up in terms of Graves Engineering, uh, we feel comfortable with, um, you know, everything is, functions properly, the design is proper. Um, in terms of the physical layout of the site, there was one comment from the fire department. Uh, in this one-way exit, um, right now, as you know, Main Street was recently improved a couple years ago. There's a moratorium <coughs> into Main Street. Um, there is a 16 foot wide curb cut that exists in this location, so we were maintaining that. It was commented from the fire department that they would, that they would like to see this be a 20 foot wide curb cut, which we agree with. Um, and once the moratorium is lifted off of Main Street, which I think we're two years, two years or so into it, um, we're more than, more than happy to, to widen that up. Uh, about two feet on either side of the existing curb line. Um, and, and we don't think that would really pose a problem in the short term where the bank itself is going to be phase one. There's going to be no, no other building going on immediately. So um, if that would be a condition of approval that once the moratorium is lifted, we widen that to 20 feet, um, I, I think my client would be, would be fine with that as, as being a condition of approval. Um, landscaping, um, there is existing screening on the easterly portion of the site to the abutting property. There are rather large, mature uh, evergreen pine trees located in the, the rear portion and what uh, my client is proposing for additional screening is a uh, six and a half foot uh, privacy fence that would continue from the end of the existing evergreens down past um, the building to about in, I believe, this location right here. So uh, this whole length uh, that would be in the view corridor of the abutting property would be screened uh, by fencing. In addition, as I said, there is existing evergreen areas right there. Um, we are waiting for our landscape architect to finalize the uh, the landscaping interior of the site. Uh, we do have plenty of green space and green areas around the parking. Um, so he is going to be fine tuning a, a nice looking landscape plan um, just for the interior portions. But exterior, we, f we feel that um, there is good screening, particularly to the easterly side. The grade at the rear portion goes up fairly dramatically, um, especially off-site. Our site is at about elevation uh, 435, and we're at like 445 in the back corner. So there's about a 10-foot grade um, differential from properties to both the, uh, both the west and the north of the site. Um, so we don't think there's an issue with screening from abutting properties um, in terms of, of nuisance. And this is already obviously a, a commercial use to, to the west of us. 
Um, we're also waiting for a final uh, lighting plan to be generated, but as, uh, as is typical, we are going to be proposing uh, full cutoff light fixtures, nothing that's going to spill light off onto adjacent properties. It's um, I think the majority of the lighting will be off of the building and there will be some just for security um, adjacent to some of the parking areas but nothing that would be spilling off but we'll be providing that uh, within the next uh, probably by next week we'll have both of those those two plans wrapped up so that the board can review those as well um, I think I covered on on most of the, the big topics um, Rich, if you have anything else to say or if the board has any questions. If I could, uh, Mr. Chairman, sure. uh, just follow up. Um, I have two additional requests if I could approach. Sure. Um, which I have emailed to the planning department um, today. I don't know if we're going to do that. Um, and in these reports, uh, okay, yep. these reports are an additional traffic study and that um, uh, was done uh, in connection with the uh, litigation in land court in Boston. And uh, the additional report is a, a noise study report, uh, which uh, addresses um, the noise factors uh, for the neighboring properties. And um, I'm pleased to say that I think that uh, I think that they <coughs> support our contention that uh, the noise factor is minimal at best. Uh, most of the noise down there on Main Street is from the traffic, um, and it's that background traffic noise that um, is what they say it pretty much drowns out just about everything down there. So um, the, the effect of the drive-through uh, in that respect is minimal, according to that, that report. Um, I would also point out that um, uh, the elevations that, are, that you have for, for the buildings um, are uh, a slightly smaller footprint than what was approved at the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, and, and, and quite a bit uh, shorter. Uh, they don't have the height of the original approval. Um, we went from, I think, 32 feet on the, in the tower down to about 19 feet. Um, uh, this was all uh, to try to address the concerns of the, of the neighbors. Um, and um, it, is all, it also affects uh, the branding of Cornerstone. It, it affects what they do uh, in the future. So, um, it was a, a fairly significant move on their part to do that um, because they'd already built other banks, as you can imagine. Um, so uh, we ran that by the, uh, the building department and planning uh, as far as whether we need to go back to the ZBA and the determination was that we do not um, because it's a smaller footprint and, and less height. Uh, so therefore, the um, decision of the ZBA stands. Okay. And if you have any questions, we'd be pleased to answer them. Sure. Um, I actually have a couple of questions. Um, <clears throat> so obviously um, in whatever decision is men mentioned, as you mentioned, uh, the ZBA decision, uh, the ZBA decisions that you've already been granted will be uh, placed in that. Yes. Right? So depending on how the land court goes, uh, that'll take care of that, right? Yes. Um, question about the, the second exit being widened after the moratorium. And this is just a question, so don't get freaked out. Okay? It's because you got reelected. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not planning on building the retail space immediately. Not immediately, but okay. but. So the condition that was proposed by Mr. Granier was that you would come back and uh, do a site plan adjustment at that point when the moratorium is over to extend that road to the recommended. Well, we're hoping, we're hoping that your decision can address that. Uh, we're hoping that your decision can say when the moratorium is over, the five-year moratorium on work on Main Street, that uh, you would expect us to widen that entrance at that time without coming back for a modification. So you anticipate that the <clears throat> structure will be built inside of that moratorium? I would anticipate that, that it would be. Um, I, I wouldn't expect otherwise. Okay, so do you have some sort of a plan that addresses maybe the safety concerns that the fire department has relative to the width? Uh, well, John, do you want to address that? I can, I can have a conversation with the deputy chief and see if there's anything that we could do in the interim, um, maybe not install um, curbing right away so they they still have the ability to drive a little bit wider if necessary without, without hitting the curb. Um, 
there's a few options I think that we can discuss with them. Just sure that I think that's what it was yeah. more of informative for myself yeah. to understand what what could potentially be done in the future should right. you know everything go right. away. The earth. Our, our plans have, have, <clears throat> have all been geared towards the full build out. So what you see is is what you get. It's the full build out that we're talking about. We have just determined, or the bank has determined, that they want to phase it and get the bank up and, and running and then see how the, the site works and, and then move forward with the retail after that, so. Okay. Uh, the only other con question I have, <clears throat> um, so I, I agree that the fencing along the, the um, I got, we'll call it the easterly side of the property as mm -hmm. I look at the plan. That is as recommended in the, no in would, the noise study. Would certainly help with the light because this is going to have a lot of tra um, potential vehicles going through. I, I don't see where the structure and the backside where 5 Dana Road is. I know you mentioned that there's like 10 foot elevation change, but how far away? I'm just concerned the light noise because the traffic is going to be flowing directly towards that space. And it, should there potentially be a fence back there to help offset that too? I know that the, well, the short answer is, um, I believe it's quite a ways away what the exact footage is. It is quite a bit of woods back there. Okay. <laughs> and there is a grade. Um, I've spoken to um, um, Mike Gregory about that, um, and we're going to do a walkthrough up there. And um, uh, his concern mostly is, uh, he, in fact, um, I know he's watching tonight, and uh, he said that uh, he was he was fine with the proposal, but his concern is cleaning up those woods because um, uh, there's, there's a lot of trash back there, and he he wanted to clean them up, and and of course. Um, Todd uh, and I have discussed it, and, and uh, that's obviously doable. He wants us to clean up the woods, and uh, there is a, a sizable amount of woodland back there. Okay, thank you. Mr. Jerry, you have any questions? Um, I'm just trying to understand when I look at the elevations here, the way you have the canopy between the two buildings, is it contemplated that one of the potential tenants there could also have a drive through Is that the intention? That is not the intention. The intention is that the drive drive through is those lanes are, are solely for the for the bank. Okay. Um, and so it's just for the aesthetic of it to cover it across. Yeah, okay. we we think it would be uh, counterintuitive to have the two drive throughs coming in from the same direction, trying to hit two different drive throughs. So um, it, it just won't work. And uh, mind you, uh, the concentration here is for the bank. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. My my other question was just about. The entrances and exits, just understanding the traffic from here, will people be able to turn left out of the site from both of these exits and what that looks like? But I guess the traffic study we haven't seen yet, so we'll, right. I guess, take a look at that. And yep. So you, you now have two traffic studies. Okay. Okay. Any That's other it. questions? No. Thank you. Mr. Thank you. No, the traffic studies is all I, I would need to see. It. I'm, I'm good with everything else. I think everything else is, is fine. All right, so um, as was mentioned by Mr. Grenier, we do have a requirement for a landscape plan, um, so that's forthcoming. Um, I, you mentioned something else. I, Mr. The lighting plan. Part of a lighting plan as well. Right, right. And, and obviously the lighting has to be uh, down, down lighting. Uh, it has to be um, dark sky compliant, and, and we, we understand that. Uh, and I'm sure the neighbors are interested in seeing what the lighting plan is going to be. So um, with that respect, uh, we'd be looking... What's My that? apologies, we have a little side thing going on. Up hey, here. what are you doing up there? I didn't uh, know. It's not me. It has nothing to do with me. <laughs> <laughs> it was um, a type, so there I was didn't. a typo on the agenda, and that's my fault. It, the legal notice was <coughs> the typo. We should have said special permit as well as site plan for that aquifer protection and related. We'll so correct it. With the, the fact that this is a special permit, Mr. Il Iliadi can sit in on this, and <laughs> yes. I can go to him now with any questions or comments he um, may have. It, traffic is the only thing of mine because I know I frequent that place sometimes. My doctor is over there. Taking a the left there, you cross yourself and then close your eyes and take a left. Uh, so that's my only concern. Okay. Okay. Um, Mr. Kale, do you have any questions or comments? I have none. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone in the public that wishes to be heard? Sir, please introduce yourself. Uh, there's actually a microphone, I believe. If you could come up to there, please. Give me your name and address. I'd appreciate it. My name is Larry Gannon. I live at 239 Main Street. Uh, I have a lot of problems with this. You people have been spot zoning that neighborhood, and you've gotten away with murder with it. But now you want to go into a commercial, you want to make it a commercial zone is basically what you want to do. You want to put retail space in there, 
you want to put a bank in there. You know, the, I, I, I know you're going to tell me the road is, is rather abused right now. There's a lot of traffic on that road. There's a lot of trailer trucks, a lot of cars. And we have people who live there. And now you want to make it commercial. You know, I, I don't have a problem because I can always unload my house. But I feel bad for the people who live on the other side of the street because they all have small lots. They don't have property that any commercial business wants because they don't have the space. They don't have the thing. And what you do what you're gonna do with that is you're gonna you're gonna put that thing in the middle of it, you're gonna have a convenience store, a bank, whatever you have in there. It just doesn't fit the neighborhood because you just change the neighborhood as it is, and you're just going to make it more commercial. And the next thing you know, the whole thing is going to be commercial on this on my side, the street. And and it's all because you allowed special permits for all these people to do all this. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Take that under advisement. Yes, sir. Please introduce yourself. Yes. <clears throat> Good evening. Francis Pro. I'm a lifetime resident of Shrewsbury, and I live at 203 Main Street, which is roughly 130, 35 feet away from the property line of this proposed um, commercial property. We're talking about a 100-foot buffer from residential, which I believe was misstated because my background is in construction. I'm also a certified building inspector through the state of Massachusetts. Once a structure is completely removed, it reverts back to the zoning of what is in place at the time. Shoesby put in a 100-foot buffer to protect its residents. They're proposing a bank and a certain size retail. We had talked to them about reducing the size. They agreed, but then the lawyer left and a new lawyer took over, and that was rescinded. All we're asking for is the 100-foot buffer and know what's going into the retail space. Because if you look at the plans and you look at them carefully, it shows three drive-up windows, one for the bank, one for the middle, and one on the outside. That could be a coffee shop. It could be a Burger King. It could be anything. Mm -hmm. We need to know what they're putting in because that's the only way we can know what the effect is to us in our way of life, and our quality of life. Also, the actual print that was presented, this is a copy of the print that was presented to the ZBA, a picture of a generic bank. No retail, nothing, just a picture of a bank from all four sides. That's what the ZBA decided on. Then all of a sudden, we've got 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 square feet of retail space going in. That's my second point. Third point is traffic. That was done, if you look at the date, after St. John's got out. You all live in the town. You know what it's like down there during rush hour. Sometimes I sit six, seven, eight minutes to get out of my driveway. There's been eight accidents I've counted that re required police to show up. From Lakeland Sigerman, Shrewsby Line, to um, Old Mill Road to set of lights. Two of them were rollover accidents from people trying to get out of the side street. They're proposing a bank, and we all know who, when do you stop at the bank? On your way home or on your way to work? It's going to be during rush hour. There's going to be accidents. The study I don't think is accurate because I can take, show you pictures out of my front window at 8, 9 o'clock in the morning where the traffic is backed up from Old Mill Road all the way down to the post office, okay? I've had my mailbox taken out three times from people trying to go around cars that are trying to make a left-hand turn. I believe, I'm not sure at a street right across from my house. It's not depicted by the council here. Also, uh, hours of operation. What are the hours of operation? We don't know if it's a 24-hour McDonald's. We don't know if 
The bank is going to run 24 hours a day. They're going to have a speaker system. We have somebody that's, you know, a few feet away. Um, going to listen to that speaker all night out their bedroom window. There's no reason they can't reduce their commercial property, take the hit, and stay 100 feet away. Give her a buffer zone. She's lived there her whole life. There was a, there was a, a house with two people that used it as an office. They went in at 9 in the morning, they left at 5 in the afternoon. That's like commercial. Not commercial, bank, fast food, or whatever's going in there, which nobody will say because they say, well, we don't know. Well, why do you put drive-up windows? If it's a dress shop, they're not going to use a drive-up window. That's, you know, the prints are here, and you should make note of that, that it shows drive-up windows there. Because we all, I, we do, as neighbors, we all know what's going in there. You look at the size, look at the square footage. It's a coffee shop and the square footage of a fast food place. It's exactly the amount they want. I can show you a dozen projects with the exact same measurements. That's why they're so hell-bent on getting those measurements, okay? The other thing, um, the hours of but lighting and sound. It may, it may not be obnoxious during the day, I agree. But how about two o'clock in the morning when somebody pulls up with their boombox playing in the convertible down five feet from her or 15 feet from her window and goes up to the drive up window? Or they go for fast food at two o'clock in the morning when the bars are closing or midnight. It's gonna be a nuisance and it's gonna be more detrimental than what was there, obviously. And that's written right into the code. It can't be more detrimental, and it can't cause harm to people's quality of life. Drainage. This is a good one. Their whole lot pitches to the east, okay? If you look at the maps, the overlay for this property, that whole area in the back behind my house, behind Mrs. Arizzi's house, and a portion of this house is a flood zone. <clears throat> They're going to increase the flood zone. I've already got complaints to the town because the Army Corps of Engineers put a, a trench through town property, which abuts mine, and it floods every year and it gets worse and worse and worse. We put this in with all that pavement and it, snow removal. They're going to push it to the back. It's going to end up on our property because that's the way it grades. There's a lot of things to consider in this. The other thing to consider is that the ZBA is still in litigation, which Mr. Ricker told you. Um, and obviously, this is going to go in with that eventually if, if, if it's something isn't resolved between Cornerstone and the neighbors. So I, I, it's all, I mean, that's really all I have to say. Um, I just want you guys aware that there's a house there, and two people used it came in in the morning and left in the afternoon. This is, this is way, way beyond what was there. All right, so it's gonna be much more detrimental. I and I, I have nothing against you know, improvements for the town. We have eight banks, maybe nine, I'm not sure. I might have missed one. We have eight banks, four of which are less than a half a mile away from where this bank is going in. You know, if it was something that was needed, like an emergency room or something like that, that ran nine to five, you know, that's a different story. We do have commercial down there, but it's nine to five commercial. We don't have any all day commercial, all night commercial, where trucks are going in the plow in the middle of the night so the bank can open in the morning and where dumpsters are empty and the trash every night at two or three o'clock because that's how they do it in Shrewsbury. All the commercial sites are done at night. So there's a lot of other things to consider other than it's just a bank and a piece of commercial property. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Just for the, for the record, as I'm looking at the plan, the only drive-through Excuse window, me? You know, f just for the record, you mentioned that there's drive-through window on the second structure that is not showing on this plan. All right, it was shown on the mm -hmm. one that I got. So it I was, just wanted to make sure that we It was removed after the first version. That's okay, I, I, was, I can only go by I just, what I see. I, I have one that shows those I just want to you know make that known also just I'm not going to address everything but um, the drive in establishment so if they were to come back to change that retail to be a drive-in to Tim's point 
uh, they require a special per another special permit from this planning board would have to come that's, back. That's that's correct. So yes, and we're aware of that. That wouldn't be covered by this one because that's not what they're asking that's for. Correct. Just so you know, everyone else knows. So I, I'm just I, 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 just, I understand to your concerns, and we'll and we'll take that all into consideration as we continue to think about this site plan. Is there anyone else in the audience who wishes to be heard? Good evening, Howard Potash. I'm an attorney at 390 Main Street, Worcester, and I represent Vincenza Arizzi, uh, who lives at 199 Main Street in Shrewsbury. I did draw up, if you wanted, a memorandum of her objections, which I'd like to give you, uh, if I could come forward. Sure thing. And I have several copies of it from members. And I would point out that uh, the prior use of this was a single family house. And two gentlemen, one of them the owner, uh, used it as an office. They sold chemicals uh, during the week, nine to five. No customers, no signage, no lighting. They parked two cars uh, during the day in the driveway of the single family house. They rarely, if ever, had a customer come. Uh, it was a commercial use, but a pretty limited commercial use, probably less noise and traffic than someone who occupied a single family house. Uh, I would also point out uh, that as I read uh, the zoning bylaw table two, it says uh, 15 feet side back to a residential zone. Ms. Orizzi lives in a residential zone, and it says except 100 feet when abutting a residential district. We would take the position, and we have in the land court, and we would take it here, that the only way you can waive that or change it is by a variance, not by a special permit. And there probably isn't good grounds uh, for a variance under, under the case law. But the town specifically enacted 100 feet next to a residential zone, not less than 100 feet, and there's somewhere 67, 68 feet. And, uh, and, uh, uh, and that could be eliminated. The 100 feet could be met if there was only one store instead of two if the project was smaller. So I, I, would, I would point that out. I would point out if you look at a, a picture that I have of the proposed uh, construction, it doesn't show any signage. It doesn't show any lighted signage or any signage or any lighting, uh, <coughs> which is very significant. Uh, we don't know who the, who the tenants are going to be. We've been told by the proponent that they don't know who's going to rent it. But it looks to me on the picture that it's two, uh, two stores that are consistent with coffee, fast food, convenience store. Uh, that's what it's consistent with. People who are going to be open seven days a week and perhaps or even 24-7. And uh, there's 48 parking spaces, which is a, a lot which is a lot of cars going in and out. Uh, on now, as to the little bank, they don't need a special permit. We don't have a problem with the little bank that they're being built, that's being built. However, today, no one does much business in a bank. They do the business at the drive through <coughs> The drive throughs have evolved. Today, the drive throughs are huge drive throughs They have big screens. They have uh, places where you can feed in documents, where you can contact the central office uh, with speakers to talk to a representative, apply for your loans, uh, credit cards, do everything. And basically, 90% or more of the people never go in the bank. That's not where the business is conducted. And these drive throughs are open 24-7 with lights and signage and people drive in with their radios on and there's a lot of noise. And a lot of people go at one, two, three in the morning to take money out of an ATM after they've been out for the evening. They're not limited to just during the day uh, like a bank. My client is right next door. She's been there for many years. She runs a daycare center. Uh, she's gonna hear all this noise. Now the traffic. There's, there's already a lot of traffic on Main Street there. And with St. John's morning, night, UMass uh, uh, Surgical Center, we're not far from 290. Uh, 
all these cars coming in, we don't know, we don't know what the retail people are going to be, but assuming there's going to be something connected with food or convenience, there's going to be a lot of people making right turns and left turns, and, uh, and we believe that the traffic is going to back up to 290 both ways, and, uh, and, uh, and at peak times, it's going to be when, when school is getting out and evening home, people going home, there's going to be considerable traffic. People go to food places all hours of the night and late at night, and that's going to create noise and rubbish and, uh, and, and high traffic, which is going to diminish my client's peaceful enjoyment of her property. She's been there for years. We <coughs> don't believe the traffic report, with all respect to Mr. Grenier, is, is adequate because you can't give a good traffic opinion unless you know who the retail occupants are and what kind of business they're in. They claim a cornerstone, but they don't know who they're going to rent to. Well, how can you know what the traffic's going to be? Uh, if you rent it to a dress shop, you're not going to have much traffic or a real estate broker. There's some brokers on that street, or a medical office, or a dental office. Uh, so we don't know. Um, it looks to me like two stores, uh, that the configuration is for a convenience store, fast food, coffee, pizza, that's, that's, and those are the people who are interested in renting uh, next to a bank. There's, met, there's a uh, project in Worcester on Shrewsbury Street with a McDonald's uh, next to a bank. Fidelity Bank next door is a, is a McDonald's. And, and, and there's numerous other projects. I believe there's one in Webster. Uh, that's what uh, uh, banks do because they want to get the highest rent and food places are the ones who pay the highest uh, 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 rent. Now, I would point out that on the special permit, the two special permits that I was not involved in yet, but I listened to the hearing, a picture, as Mr. Brault pointed out, a picture was given of a, of a building that the ZBA based their uh, approval on a building. Can I, can I that stop is you on not this, EBA? That does not, that building bears Excuse no me, resemblance to what's being built Excuse me, sir. today. The ZBA decision is nothing in our I know purview. That. So I, just, I understand I just, you're giving us background, but we already understand the ZBA. We, I, I, I just, I just, I, I just uh, uh, point that out. And it's drainage. Uh, we believe the drainage is inadequate because the trees and grass are coming out. There's a lot of water in that area. And uh, we believe that uh, there's going to be more runoff onto the Arizzi property. And in the winter, it's going to freeze, and it's going to create a hazard. Uh, there's now going to be 58% uh, uh, pavement, and uh, uh, as opposed to all, all the grass and trees that were there uh, that absorbed uh, water. So uh, based upon the memorandum, and my client would substantially oppose of a site plan as it's being built. Uh, she lives in a residential neighborhood, residential zone, and she has the right, I uh, believe she has the right to rely on that, and there'll be a substantial diminish diminishment of the value of her house and, uh, and interference with her peaceful enjoyment if this project goes forward as proposed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the public? Yes, sir. <clears throat> you know, sure. because of what they want to do, they're going to change the whole aspect of that street. They're going to change that into a commercial space, a commercial area. And I think that if you are going to allow them to do it, they should be before the town meeting, and they should change the zoning. If that's what you want to put in there, change the zoning. Don't stick something in there that doesn't belong there on the, on the neighborhood. I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard? Mr. If I could just point out, um, this is a limited commercial zone. Um, it is zoned correctly. Um, the, the bank isn't allowed use. Retail isn't allowed use. Um, if the bank had an intention of putting a coffee shop in there or something along those lines, 
then we'd be showing you a, a, a drive-through on the other side of that building uh, because uh, those are a necessity uh, really for today's coffee shops and Starbucks and, and stores like that um, in order for them to locate in your place they're going to require you to have a drive-through. Um, it's just a fact of life in the commercial and commercial uh, leasing these days. Um, you know, the fact is there's no need to change the zone. Um, the, the, it, un un unfortunately, for some people, they live on the edge of zones. Um, and we have a situation here where um, uh, we have a zone line. Um, this is properly zoned, um, and uh, it is it is as of right in terms of a bank. Uh, I would suggest again respectfully that uh, the drive-through, you know, you'll, you'll have a chance to review the noise uh, and, and the traffic reports. Uh, I respectfully uh, suggest to you that uh, uh, this is a minimal um, um, effect whatsoever. Um, I, I would like to ask uh, Peter Brown if he wants to address a couple of the issues that uh, Council raised. He is the Council uh, that has been dealing with Mr. Potash in the Boston litigation. So. Okay, as long as we're not going to get into a ZBA discussion about what's no. going on. Okay, thank you. Please. I'll be, I'll be very brief. Peter Brown, uh, Brown Legal, um, and we represent Cornerstone Bank in the ZBA litigation. That was filed in 2020 and is still pending um, in the land court. Just very briefly, you have the traffic report that was submitted in June of 2021 by Cornerstone Bank as part of that uh, litigation, which further confirms the finding of the ZBA of minimal, in fact, no uh, noise impact at all, in particular because of the plan of Cornerstone Bank to put in uh, part of that screening, that six and a half foot wall that will keep all of the noise within uh, all of the registered levels. You also have the traffic report uh, from McMahon as well, in addition to Mr. Grenier's report. The, um, the plaintiffs in that case, Mr. Rizzi and Mr. and Mrs. Brialt, were uh, given the opportunity by September of 2021 to hire and file any expert rebuttal reports that they might have, not even rebuttal reports because it's their report, to go and show that we're wrong, that there is this major impact on noise, that there is this major <clears throat> impact on traffic, and there has not been. And so I want to make that representation to you that uh, we have those expert reports, they've been submitted, they have been there for well over a year, the court deadlines, uh, have come and gone, the ZBA hearing has come and gone, and there's never been any expert to come in and contradict any of those, uh, any of those findings. Um, so I am very glad that the process has still evolved from the date of the ZBA, and in fact, some of the allowances have even been fully exercised. Um, this is a development alongside, as Attorney Ricker said, a, an abutting residential district. Mr. Rizzi has a home there. She uses it uh, for her daycare uh, business as well. But uh, I know Cornerstone Bank wants to be good neighbors. I know they want to be um, good partners here in the town. And as part of that, I think even in spite of litigation, in spite of two years of, de of delays and COVID and massive increased costs, uh, they're still here looking at this and how can they make people happy, how can they be reasonable, and how can this project uh, be developed and be a positive uh, force, not just the project, but the property in this community. Uh, that's where the litigation stands, and, and hopefully Cornerstone either will prevail or will reach agreement along the way, and uh, you will see this project uh, in the not so distant future. Okay, thank you. And a McDonald's wouldn't fit there. <laughs> Very good. All right, um, well, it's obvious that we're gonna be continuing this hearing, um, awaiting other, other information and for us to digest some of the information that was brought up this evening. Um, I'll entertain a motion to continue. I move that we continue the proposed bank and retail building site plan approval, Cornerstone Bank, uh, 195 Main Street to the August 4th, 2022 meeting at 7 p.m. So I have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you all for your input.
the next item of business is Our next item of business is a new public hearing for a proposed warehouse and distribution facility, site plan approval of Shrewsbury Land Property Owner LLC. Location is 440 Hartford Turnpike. Um, as a note, Mr. Rodolakis will be recusing himself from this hearing as well. Mr. Thomas, could you please read the legal notice? The Shrewsbury Planning Board will hold a public hearing on Thursday evening, July 14th, 2022 at 7 p.m in the Selectman's Hearing Room at the Richard D. Carney Municipal Office Building, 100 Maple Avenue, to hear the application of Shrewsbury Land Property Owner, LLC, 133 Pearl Street, Boston, Mass., 02110, as required by the Town of Shrewsbury Zoning Bylaw, Section 7F3, for site plan approval by the Planning Board to allow the construction of an industrial building for warehousing and distribution. Proposed development is shown on plans entitled Proposed Building 440, Hartford Turnpike on 12 sheets dated May 10th, 2022. Prepared by Eugene T. Sullivan, Incorporated, 230 Lowell Street, Suite 2A, Wilmington, Mass., 01887. Stamped by Eugene T. Sullivan, PE. The subject property is located northeasterly of Stony Hill Road and southerly of Hartford Turnpike and consists in whole or part of the Shoesery Assessor's Tax Plate 54, Plot 015000. Copy of the application, plans, and reports may be seen in the Office of the Planning and Economic Development Department at the Richard D. County Municipal Office Building, 100 Maple Avenue, Shoes or Mass, and on the Planning Board website. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. If the applicant could please introduce themselves. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Mark Donahue from Fletcher Tilton on behalf of Shrewsbury Property Owner uh, LLC. With me this evening to present the application for site plan approval. Uh, is Haley Palazzola uh, from GFI Partners. Shrewsbury Pro Land Property Owner is an affiliate of GFI Partners. Uh, the Eugene Sullivan from Eugene <laughs> T. Sullivan uh, Incorporated, uh, Project Engineers, and Courtney Sudak from Tetra Tech with regard to the traffic analysis. Uh, very briefly, just to set the table, uh, the site that you have in question, if you could call it maybe slide seven, uh, uh, Haley. Um, is approximately a 10 and a half acre site uh, fronted on the easterly side of uh, Hartford Turnpike, uh, presently unimproved, uh, proximate to the Stony Hill Drive uh, entrance toward that residential development back there. The site is known to permitting authorities, having been phase one of a previously approved comprehensive permit for residential development, uh, the other phase of which is still uh, a potential, but this is obviously replacing that effort. The proposed building is a little over 133,000 uh, single-story warehouse that we'll describe to you uh, in some detail uh, with loading docks as located. We were before the Zoning Board of Appeal earlier this calendar year seeking at that time a variance so as to permit loading in the front yard. Um, that variance was granted and as you know uh, due to the efforts of the planning department and this board that zoning was changed later to a special permit but the variance is valid so we don't need any further relief from that um, just to refresh your recollection with regard to gfi and its presence in um, uh, shrewsbury let me turn, turn it over to haley to briefly remind you thank you mark thank you to the board um, chair for having us this evening <coughs> um, again my name is haley palazzola of gfi partners the affiliate of shrewsbury land property owner so if you recall, I'll spare you with too much details about who GFI is. I was in front of you um, in May prior to the town meeting um, as we presented uh, the potent, um, proposed bylaw changes to this uh, limited industrial zone. So GFI Partners is a full service real estate developer based in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, over the last couple of decades, we've um, developed about 17 million square feet of commercial space um, and actively own about 3 million square feet in Worcester or the surrounding neighborhoods, including 200 acres of land in Frewsbury. Um, so this evening, we're here to present um, this speculative warehouse, so I thought it may be helpful to take a peek at a couple of other projects that we're actually working with, with Gene, 
um, on um, all these facilities that you see at the top row here are similar in design to what we're proposing at 440 Harper Turnpike, single story general warehouse that could attract um, you know, types of users that are similar to these light manufacturing light assembly. So then, uh, again, this is not your last mile distribution facility um, or, you know, truck terminal of any sort. We see loading on a single side, 36 clear, um, but when I get to the details, I'll turn that over to, to Gene Sullivan. The bottom row here is just a couple of examples of other larger facilities that GFI is currently either permitting or actively constructing at this time. Um, so with that, if there's not any other questions about GFI, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Gene Sullivan, uh, the project engineer, to go through the site plan here. You want me to go to the existing conditions, Gene? Sure, yeah. <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. Chairman and other board members. Um, my name is Gene Sullivan, for the record. Uh, I'm the project engineer, and I'll give you a little background on the site and what we're hoping to do with it uh, through this permitting authority. Um, I'll reference the plan by top, bottom, left, and right instead of east, north, and west. Um, it's a, as Mark said, it's about a 10 and a half acre site in a limited industrial zoning district. Uh, it's at the corner of Stony Hill Road and Hartford Turnpike. Um, from the right hand side of the property to the left hand side, there's about 50 or 60 feet of grade. So it's a significant um, terrain adjustment to deal with. Um, and there are some existing wetlands. Uh, in the bottom left hand corner, there are two different wetland uh, bodies labeled BBW1 or A and B. 1A, 1B, uh, we have applied for a notice of intent with the Conservation Commission and appeared in front of them uh, back on June 21st. Uh, <coughs> they, uh, really what came out of that hearing was we were going to have a peer review of our wetland line, but they didn't really have any uh, substantial issues with our plan or our uh, methodologies. Um, Haley, if you could go to the next plan, we'll explain what our development's all about. Um, Different than uh, previous property developments proposed here, uh, we are proposing a single access off of Hartford Turnpike. Um, it will have a right turn lane in and right turn lane out. It's about in the middle of our property line or our property. Um, hence, we're uh, in general, we're taking the hill and knocking down the high part and pushing in the low part and meeting it in the middle, uh, which is where our, our driveway is located and uh, makes the most sense in terms of uh, construction methods and, and costs related to that. Um, so there's a single access in, there's loading all about, all on the, uh, say, the top side of the building facing uh, Hartford Turnpike, and then on the left-hand side we have 100 car passenger vehicles uh, for the office and uh, warehouse workers. Um, additionally, we have full circulation around the building with a fire access lane um, coming on the left or the right side around back and, and circulating all the way around. Uh, that would be a grass paved system. I don't know if you're familiar with that or not, but it's a, a it's not pavement. It's a, a membrane that puts down with stones and they grass over the top of it, so it does leach in the ground. It's a porous uh, material um, that is suitable to handle fire equipment. Uh, we use that in a lot of different communities. Um, we have planned for in that purple area, small office space. We tend to see about 5,000 square feet of office space for, you know, to support shipping or uh, small office areas to uh, run their business operations. Uh, it's pretty typical of what we're finding in these businesses. Um, probably go next to the drainage and utilities <coughs> plan. Sorry. That's okay. That's fine. Um, so what we've done on this property, there's quite a few retaining walls. I should have pointed that out as well. They're kind of following the fire lane um, because we are down in the hole. Um, one side we're building up and we're below the the, dry, uh, the walls and on the other side we're above the wall and it's it's meeting the grade over by the wetlands because they're actually down below the, our main parking lot. Um, but what we've done is uh, had a series of, um, this building will have a slope heading towards Hartford Turnpike and towards the rear, so a ridge down the middle. So we have a collection system of roof drains and downspouts around the building uh, leading over to a detention or an infiltration basin on the left hand side there. Um, we've also got catch basins throughout the yard uh, that will collect runoff, deep sump catch basins, uh, water quality unit, and then discharge into the infiltration basin as well. Um, we've been able to uh, design the basin to infiltrate, but also attenuate rot rates and flows uh, so that everything's less than uh, what it is currently and treated properly in accordance with mass DEP standards, stormwater standards. Um, one other thing of note, 
uh, is that we actually have designed the uh, passenger vehicle area, which is the 100 spaces. I should have shown you on the last graphic, but um, that's a porous pavement section um, as opposed to standard pavement. We have heavy duty pavement for the loading dock, but this is a uh, pavement that will allow water to infiltrate through it, and uh, it has a, a deeper section of stone, washed stone, sands, and things like that to allow that water to infiltrate directly into the ground, um, which will put less of a burn in on our drainage systems. Um, we've had a lot of luck with those. We do them uh, in a lot of other communities to uh, have some low impact development as far as that goes. So, um, Water and sewer are available to the site. We're, uh, for now, the sewer is going to be leaving the bottom left-hand corner and heading out into Stony Hill Road, uh, and water comes in along Hartford Turnpike that we'll use for our domestic water services and our fire protection systems. Um, we've also submitted landscaping plans and uh, site lighting plans with full cutoff fixtures and so forth, um, if you have any questions relative to that. So that's really all I have. Uh, ready to entertain questions or pass it over to Courtney. Um, if I could, Dean, just really quick, I was just going to throw the, uh, the 3D renderings up just because I, I don't sure. think the board has seen these before. Okay. You can kind of see your retaining walls better in this picture. Yeah. Yeah, so the driveways on the left-hand side, you'll be entering in. You can see the loading docks, you know, facing the street over there. And as you go, say, upper left-hand corner, Haley, you're going around there where the fire access is. You can see the retaining walls up above our parking lot. And as you come around the corner, you can barely see it sticking out, because, but it's still 30 feet high. But that's just uh, kind of how we met the grade in the middle. And um, how tall is the retaining wall at the highest point? Uh, it's probably 25 feet or so um, over on that back lower side where we're adjacent to the wetlands. Um, closer to the back and the sides where the, retain where the uh, residences are, it's more in the 17 foot number, num number somewhere like that. Um, but it actually goes up and down too. As you're coming around the corner, that's the highest point there. Um, and then when you get behind the building, it actually goes to nothing and then starts transferring down into below. So um, we've also provided screening, uh, and fencing and plantings along the, what is kind of the behind the building, I guess from uh, Hartford Turnpike uh, with our residential neighbors back there. And that's just another view of the office entrance. Yep. Okay, great. I'll turn it over to Courtney now for traffic. So, for the record, Courtney Sudak with Tetra Tech. Um, we're the traffic consultants for the project. Um, I have a slide here. If you want to zoom in a little more, oh, thanks. Um, so we met with DOT and um, staff from the town at a scoping session in December to go over what DOT and the town planner would like to see um, for the traffic study since this was already reviewed for a higher traffic generator um, back in 2016. Um, so what we were scoped for was the two intersections that you see here, um, the two Stony Hill Road intersections along Route 20, um, as well as the site driveway. Through discussions with DOT about the site access, um, DOT was adamant that right in, right out only on Route 20 was the access that they would likely approve. Um, so the applicant <coughs> um, has restricted access even though they did want full access it is now right in right out only no access on stony hill road if you recall from the point at hills farm project that was previously approved there was an emergency access only driveway on stony hill road so this is just purely access on route 20. route 20 is mass dot jurisdiction all the way through the study area um, and we also looked at crash history we went as far back um, as three years before the pandemic began, since there wasn't as much traffic um, uh, in the last couple of years to make sure that we had a good basis for the crash analysis. And the crash rates were significantly below the mass DOT statewide and district-wide averages at both intersections and along the roadway segment between the two intersections um, uh, for the um, five years of crash data that we analyzed. Um, so if you go to the next slide. 
So unfortunately, because of the pandemic, it really didn't make sense to collect new traffic data. So we discussed this at length with DOT, and they were very comfortable with us using the um, data that we collected back in 2014 for the Point at Hills Farm project, adding in um, some developments that, uh, or considering potential developments that had been constructed since then, um, as well as using a background growth rate to uh, estimate from 2014 up to 2021. And then we added in um, several background development projects that are planned or approved or under construction based on consultation with the town planner um, to generate out seven years in the future. Um, so first, the existing traffic volumes are shown here. Um, and you can see that uh, we only looked at AM and PM because those are the typical peak hours uh, looked at for warehouse development. And then if you go to the next slide, Haley. Um, so we projected out seven years in the future with numerous background projects, and then we took a look at this specific project. Um, so as Haley mentioned, as of now, this project is anticipated to be a typical warehouse. <coughs> um, so we used industry standard trip rates published by ITE um, for the approximately 134,000 square feet of space. Um, the newer trip generation rates published by ITE last year now allow us to separate out the heavy vehicle traffic um, for warehouse use. Um, it, before, it used to just be that you could only get the total traffic, so that's convenient. So you can see during the peak hours, there's only a nominal amount of actual you know, tractor trailers or single unit vehicles. Um, in total, it's about one additional vehicle every um, two or uh, three to four minutes. So go to the next slide. So we wanted to compare this to what was previously proposed as part of the Point at Hills Farm development back in 2015, which you may recall was 180 multifamily units at that time. Um, the project was ultimately approved for 156 multifamily units, and that generated more than an additional vehicle trip per minute. When you compare that to what the applicant is currently proposing, there is a significant de decrease in peak hour trips, but particularly the weekday daily trips, you can see that gets reduced by almost 1,000 vehicles per day. Um, so definitely a significantly less traffic impacts than what was previously approved by the board. Let's go to the next slide. Obviously, with this being a right-in, right-out driveway, the trip distribution is really simple. Um, you know, 100% of the traffic will have to enter um, from Route 20 from the west, and they'll have to exit to the east. Next slide, please. When you apply that to the trip um, generation, um, this slide <coughs> provides you what those actual numbers would be. Um, so you can see there's only a handful of trips um, going past the Stony Hill Road driveways during the peak hours, and then it would be even less during the off-peak hours. Next slide, please. And then for reference, these are the, the build traffic volumes. When you add um, the future projections out to 2029 with all of the background development projects that we um, accounted for, as well as the general background growth rate and our project, that gives you the build. Next slide, please. So then um, DOT did want us to update the uh, capacity analyses at the study intersections. Um, even though it's significantly less traffic, they just wanted us to document it. Um, so this is just a table summarizing the weekday morning peak hour results for the existing no build, which is the future year without uh, the warehouse project, and then the future build, which is with the project. And Haley, if you can zoom in a little bit so you can see that the impact um, due to the project is negligible. There's uh, very little um, change in the volume to capacity ratio going from no build to build at Stony Hill Road West. Um, and then at Stony Hill Road East, if you scroll down a little bit, um, you can see uh, that that intersection operates at level of service C or better. And then we also looked at the PM peak hour. Go to the next slide. And the same thing, that uh, the impacts from the project are negligible, um, hardly any change to the volume to capacity ratio. And as I mentioned before, because uh, under this application, there'll be only one driveway 
it'll be right in, right out on um, Route 20 and no traffic on Stony Hill Road. We're not adding to that side street delay. Next slide, please. And to make sure that the site driveway um, it follows AASHTO criteria <coughs> for site distance, um, AASHTO is the industry standard. Um, we looked at the design speed, which is uh, 45 miles per hour. Um, uh, and we also looked at the observed 85th percentile travel speeds um, back from when we collected ATR data uh, as part of the Point at Hills Farm project. You can see that the 85th percentile travel speed is 55. The posted speed limit used to be higher. Um, in the last few years, DOT reduced it to 45. Um, which should make things uh, safer than they were before. But there's plenty of sight distance. You know, it's more than 600 feet in each direction. Um, so uh, right now, we are having DOT review the driveway location. So there may be some minor uh, slight modifications, you know, based on some minor comments they might have. Um, and Gene will update the plans accordingly. Um, but for right now, we've, um, you know, uh, we've given them what the big ask, which was the driveway restriction. Um, I'm happy to answer questions, or Haley, if you want to wrap it up. I think we're all ready. Yeah, that's, okay. that's it for, for the presentation. So we're obviously glad to answer any questions. Uh, we will be asking to continue so we can make some modifications based upon the July 1st comments received from the planning staff and the July 6th comments from Graves. Um, as Jean indicated, we're going to the Conservation Commission. So we'd like an opportunity to update all of that and bring it back to you ultimately, but we'd like to answer any questions this evening in any event. Okay. Uh, Mr. Jerry. <clears throat> uh, first, I guess a question, because I'm not familiar with this grass paving system, but can that be plowed for snow? Yes. And is your intention, obviously, to keep that clear? It has to stay clear, absolutely. Right. And I guess just following on on that, uh, I'm just a little... I guess concerned about where the snow storage is on site given the volume that you're going to be plowing here uh, so i assume the bulk of it's going to be trucked and uh there will be a lot of it's going to be towards the front along our uh, frontage and whatever remains over that will have to be right, i think the right turn only mitigates some of that but yep okay that was my only comment Mr. thomas thank you you're welcome i just have a comment that i think it's a much better use for what was proposed there before <laughs> um, that's a low bar <laughs> <laughs> I think this fits a little better um, I agree with Mr. Jerry about the snow storage but other than that I'm, I'm comfortable with it with everything else right now it's, we have to see what conservation says obviously but I'm, I don't have concerned. any other further questions or comments we did that. get um, three or four memos between engineering the town planner graves um, we had a meeting of conservation, and there really isn't anything in there that we're concerned about. As a matter of fact, I've responded to 90% of them already. Okay. Um, so uh, just to give you a little comfort with that, it's... Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I got a, just a couple of questions. So you mentioned that the where the employee parking is, not, not necessarily the hard uh, mm -hmm. pavement area. That is a design for water to flow through. Correct. Um, you, you probably saw in Graves Engineering's comments uh, the fact that there's a water issue on Stony Hill and that there's probably going to be some improvements that are going to need to happen around there. Is that something so, that you're amenable to? Yeah, that's, that's kind of the only loose end we have in the comments. You see that in a couple of different memos, um, the town engineers as well. Um, I have some ideas on how to do it. I saw what they did before. I mean, the culvert under the road is great, but I, have a better, I think I have a better idea on how to capture it. First, and... Really, our property is going to do 90% of the work. Um, uh, our slope across is what's causing a lot of the problem in the runoff, right? Well, all that's going to be contained by our development. It'll be routed into the pond. Um, so we're talking a very small amount of area that can contribute towards that going forward. But which it's still going to slope on that side along the road, and we'll handle that with him. Okay, and the only other comment I have, and I'm, I didn't have a lot of time to really drill into these plans, um, uh, I've only been around for the last couple of days. The retaining wall, um, is this abutting um, a residential area or what we're on that tall part of the retaining wall? What is, what is, what is so the, the tall part on the, if you're looking on the plan on the right hand side, that's next to the freight company, right? That's the tall part. As you go to the, along the back here, that is um, the, the, um, 
abutting the residential. So we're actually below them. Okay. So that wall's in the middle. It's kind of zero, like I said, and it's going up that way or to about 15 feet at the right-hand, bottom right-hand corner. And by the time you get to the bottom left-hand corner, we're up above and it, it drops off down in there. So, so it's only retaining wall on the backside for about half, but we did put a, si a, a fence along the whole yeah. rear property my only, line. My only concern is we we've been experiencing issues with retaining walls in the in the community for the last couple of years and okay. i'm not sure if this one's going to need to have a um yes. a structural well, engineer yeah. well, they were over four feet they're required to be designed by a structural engineer right. by code so this i'll remind the board that this board's been asking every project with uh said retaining walls for those details to be submitted now for geotechnical peer review so um, for consistency's sake, I think I recommend to this board that they request the same detailed plans. Yeah, up front. Time. Okay. And we'll send them out to our geotechnical peer reviewer. So. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, other than that, I agree with Mr. Thomas. It's definitely a much better, uh, I mean, th there's only one other comment I have is you have some, some of the docks or entrances are, are very close to where the entrance and exit is. So for traffic flow, there with the trucks is um so we've done auto turn i've done auto turn in there um that's 150 feet could you i know we've done it with fire trucks yep um, could you have something provided yep. to us to show that as well please yep i've already done it so it's happy to pass it along and as far as that grass um emergency exit area uh, i did not get a chance to read the fire department the fire department was okay <coughs> with that they asked me to prove to them that it's acceptable uh, as a method of support, but that's not a problem. Okay, so you'll provide? Yep, we'll provide a cut sheet and show them all that. Okay, sure. very good. Um, other than that, is there anybody else have any questions? Nope. Okay, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone in the public that wishes to be heard? Not seeing any hands raised. Um, it's obvious that we have to continue this hearing, so I'll entertain a motion to continue the hearing. May I suggest that to give us the time and also finish with CONCON that we actually go to your September meeting? Sure. What's the date for September, Brent? Let me just look. September 1st is posted. Is it the 1st? Yep. It's the 1st. Uh, yes. Turn it down here is correct. It's September 1st. I move that we uh, continue the proposed warehouse and distribution facility, site plan approval, Shrewsbury Land Property Owner LLC, new public hearing to our September 1st, 2022. Meeting at 7 p.m. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Our next public hearing is for a proposed gas station car wash convenience store in bank site plan approval and special permit. It's a new public hearing for location 193 Hartford Turnpike. Uh, again, Mr. Rodalakis will be recusing himself from this hearing as well. Mr. Thomas, could you please read the public notice? Choosery Planning Board, as a special permit granting authority, will hold a public hearing on Thursday evening, July 14th, 2022, at 7 p.m. In the Selectman's Hearing Room at the Richard D. County Municipal Office Building, 100 Maple Avenue, to hear the application of Oceanti Group, LLC, 1140 Reservoir Avenue, Cranston, Rhode Island, 02920, as required by the Town of Shrewsbury Zoning Bylaw, Section 7F3, and Section 6, Table 1, for site plan approval and special permit by the Planning Board to allow for the construction of a car wash, gas station, convenience store, and bank with a drive in service. The proposed development is shown on plans entitled Proposed site plan documents on 23 sheets dated April 29th, 2022, revised on May 31st, 2022, and on May 31st, 2022, prepared by Bowler Engineering, 352 Turnpike Road, South Brown, Mass, 01772. The subject property is located easterly of Lake Street and northerly of Hartford Turnpike and consists in whole or in part of the Shoes Assessor's Tax Plate 52, Plot 125000. Copy of the application, plans, and reports may be seen in the Office of the Planning and Economic Development Department at the Richard D. County Municipal Office Building, 100 Maple Avenue, Shrewsbury, Mass., and on the Planning Board website. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Um, I did receive a letter asking for a continuation of this hearing until the September 1st, 2022 Planning Board meeting. September 1st or August 4th? This one says to oh, September 1st. As well, okay. Yes. Um, if anyone doesn't have any objections to that, 
I'll entertain a motion to just continue the hearing. Uh, any, anyone any, have any, any have any questions or comments? I'm okay. issue with that. I I uh, move that we uh, continue the proposed gas station, car wash, convenience store, and bank site plan approval and special permit. Pro Cianti Group LLC, new public hearing at 193 Hartford Turnpike to our September 1st, 2022 meeting at 7 p.m. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Our next public hearing is a continued public hearing for Falcon Farms, nine lot subdivisions, definitive subdivision. Uh, location 581, 583, 587 South Street. <coughs> and is the applicant present? Yes. We would need Mr. Rodolakis. Oh, Mr. Rodolakis can sit in on this one. He's here. He's here. He's here. here. <laughs> Waiting for you guys. <laughs> He's been dragging his feet. Oh, by the way, you're, you're vice chair for this year, too, just so you know. Thank you. Welcome I back. appreciate that. Okay. Yeah. Good evening. Uh, for the record, my name is Imad Zurain from Deval Zurain. A civil engineer with me, Rashid Shaykh, the, uh, the, the applicant. Uh, just give you an update uh, where we are at this point. Uh, we just re we've uh, the last conservation hearing. We've uh, received the uh, order of condition. Uh, I think on the 21st was that hearing. Uh, as far as the reviews, uh, there was uh, the last one mi minor comment from uh, Graves, uh, which is uh, adding an invert to, pl to the plan. Uh, and we think we could just add that to the, uh, to the uh, mylars at the end, you know, just like one invert for a, for a, for a drain pipe. Uh, so the only really outstanding issue was the um, uh, GZA review of the uh, retaining wall, which we've submitted uh, about two weeks ago. We submitted the plans of the uh, design for the uh, segmental walls, and we've received the comments, uh, I believe, yesterday. Uh, since then, we've give, we give them to the engineer, and uh, we've got response back. We forward to uh, to uh, Bernie. Uh, we think they're all pretty much. Uh, they were asking for just additional information. Uh, so, other than that, I think we, you know, we we hope we could close the, close the meeting, and you know, maybe condition you know satisfying GZA. Uh, with the uh, with the uh, requ requested information, and add adding the uh, invert to the plan on uh, for graves. Very That's good. That's where we are. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any questions or comments from the board at this time, Mr. Jerry? I have none. Mr. Rodolakis. Did we get the GZA report? Uh, so, Mr. Chairman, I received it at 4:30 today. So. <laughs> It's on the Google Drive. It's been sent to GZA already for their final comment back. So I literally just received it. I don't know. I don't even think I had a chance to print it for you. No, it wasn't. It, no, it wasn't. No, so I just, like I said, I just received it at the end of the day. So we'll still get one more comment back, this board from GZA, reviewing the uh, applicant's response. Mm -hmm. so, okay, so we, you know, I, I was ready to kind of close this. Yeah, we can. We can condition it with, uh, no. It's, up, it's guess, up to I the board's the only, comfort level, what you want to do. I guess the only issue is, like I think I said, said from the get-go, is that if we're going to end up accepting this crossing as part of a subdivision, I want to make sure GZA is fine with it or whoever, or whoever is fine with it. That's my concern. That's my only concern. I think that's a reasonable rationale. So it's, it's the board's decision to make how their comfort level. I mean, it's three weeks away because we've had this late meeting. It's not a full month. It's just three weeks to the next meeting, and we'll have, like I, I said, I sent it that. to GZA this evening. We should have it tomorrow. I understand. So I don't want to hold up the I know. applicant. Yeah. But I understand. We, it's, uh, the applicant, I'm not going to say held us up, but we continued it. But conceptually, I don't have a problem with anything that the applicant has done, but I just want to make sure that we're not approving something that ultimately comes back to us because the town or GZA says we get the road acceptance, that we not, we're not comfortable with the crossing that uh, the applicant has designed or constructed. That's my only issue. So, Mr. Chair, may I? 
for the record, <clears throat> Rashid Sheikh, trustee, Falcon Farms. So just want to clarify that basically uh, we were asked to get this design, detailed design from the structural engineer, which we did, and that engineer is very familiar with the town of Shrewsbury, has done a lot of work, uh, Mr. Richard Beauchanel. So anyway, he submitted about two weeks ago. We got the feedback from GZA yesterday, which was actually honestly asking more information in terms of give a little more detail, uh, sketch of the uh, fence, something very rudimentary, which, but there were a lot of them. So we actually, and, and also ask, you know, do this and do that. So we actually, he, our engineer right away turned, I mean, again, it was only one day, and he, he turned back right away because he knew that we are meeting today. And that we didn't see that it's anything substantial, so we kind of accepted all what GZA has said. And, and we are still saying that if you want to condition it, that, you know, either permit or acceptance of road is uh, conditioned to, you know, satisfactory closing with the GZA, we, we are absolutely fine with it. I'm not sure you want that, to be honest with you. If I was the applicant, I, I don't think that I would want that. I, I would think I would want some finality with respect to the crossing design. It's up to you. You know, I, I suppose I can go with it, but I don't think I would want that. I think they're not asking for any culvert, uh, you know, kind of issues. This is more, because I, I read the comments, and they were actually, they, they put it right on the sketch. They didn't even write on a ladder. It wasn't any substantial. So they were asking, give more detail here, give more detail here, do this and do that, and he did all that. I was, I, I, I'm comfortable yeah. with this. You're going to have to sell the houses, and... If, if someone raises the issue, and, and you're going to build the houses before the the road is accepted, I, I, you know, I, I guess I can live with it, but it'd be something that I'm not sure I'd be entirely comfortable with. Well, we understand, but it's it's a 10 to 12 foot high wall, and walls are built. I haven't seen I haven't seen the dis, I haven't seen the comments. No, I understand. I understand. So I'm, kind we, shooting, I'm, I'm kind of shooting in the blind. What I'm trying to say is uh, we, we're willing to take the risk because it, it's not a, what, what we're proposing here is, is, is built every day. You know, they, they build walls every day, and it's not a high wall. It's 10 to 12 foot high. So we're willing to accept the risk to go, you know, until GZA is satisfied, you know, to set a condition until GZA is satisfied with the design. Uh, it's not a it's not a difficult design. It's a, it's a simple design. I, I suppose that in the decision it would say that it's understood that uh, that road acceptance won't be road. Ex I mean that uh, it's understood that the or the applicant understands that road acceptance uh, won't be. Forthcoming until GZA approves the. Why don't we just put the town sh shall not accept the road as a public way um, until such time as GZA has. GZA and the. Or the peer, I'll say peer, the peer review. review. Let's say peer, peer review. review in the engineering department because they weren't in the same. Oh, I, I understand. When somebody at the end, after it's constructed, somebody's going to sign off on it. A <laughs> professional yeah. engineer will sign off. It could off. be three years from now. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I understand. I understand. But yeah. we're trying to move forward, then, you know. I, I, I can appreciate that, and I know it's a long road, and I'm not trying to hold you up. I understand. But, and I'm sorry that GZA didn't get the you know, response yesterday or the day before, but have you ordered the bridge? <laughs> no. Things didn't work. Things didn't work. Okay. Anything okay. else, Steve? No, I think I'm good. I'm good. Um, I'm good as well. Um, I, I echo Mr. Rodelikas' concerns about not having a clean bill of health from GZA on this, but if you're amenable to having that as part of the condition, I think we can word it such that the town is still protected and and yes. Your points. Uh, we're not going to. The, the town will not accept the road until the GZA is completely satisfied. Yeah. Uh, we're uh, not going to. I know I'm not going to, as a board member, suggest that we recommend acceptance to town meeting until such time. until such time as yep. GZA. Might. I would use the peer review. The peer is the right word. Oh, peer review. Peer review. Well, whatever. <laughs> peer of the town uh, town engineering yeah. department doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah. 
It is. Political decision. <laughs> Keep in mind when you're going before town meeting. It's a political decision. It could be for any reason that people don't like acceptance of the road. So I'm trying to eliminate those issues for you, Rashid, in advance. No, I appreciate it. No, you did. But we believe we're going to resolve this issue in a week. Okay. I've I'm seen not going to say I've heard that before. But <laughs> yeah, but. Well, I paid the money. I want to close it. <laughs> not with this engineer. <laughs> <laughs> they are expensive, and I don't want to keep it open. Huh. But you get what you pay for in this world, Richie. I just tell you, with engineers or lawyers, I think this engineer has served you well. So. Okay. Yeah, There's no you. other questions or comments from the board. This yeah. I have one comment, Mr. Yes. Chairman. So um, it was brought to my attention today looking at the lotting plan, um, and this was changed from the prior application. Is uh, uh, If you take a look at where it's called Lot 9 on the plan, is actually an existing lot and that was called out the last time in the 2021 plan so there's only nine lots being proposed what is now listed as 601 i'm sorry i can't see it. i printed it out and i couldn't find my printout uh six lot 601 r is actually should be lot eight lot eight should be lot nine and then lot nine should be it's not part of this subdivision because it was already in existence it's an a no it was created by an a in 2015 so it well predates this so the other one, the one called lot 601R should be eight. And I, this is important because if you go to lot 10, it's automatically two affordable housing units that are due inclusionary housing. Yeah. We had discussed this and I went back 14 months ago to my old, well, I didn't go back in time. I went back through my <laughs> files to stuff from 14 months ago and looked at our correspondence and we had discussed this previously. So it's important that that lot Remember, that was not part. We had discussed this. That's not part of it. Correct. So, But it's called Lot 9 currently on the plan. So I'm mm. going to ask as a condition, I'm just letting you know, if the board's comfortable with this, I'd recommend a condition that says the lotting order needs to be redone. I'm going to ask for the final addresses anyways. But the lotting order needs to be redone, so it's still 9, but Lot 9 is actually changed to 577 South Street. Does that make sense to everyone? Because that was accidentally or I should say erroneously included as one of the lots in the subdivision, but it already exists. It was created through an A&R subdivision seven years ago. So that it would be exists independently line. of this. It doesn't it's need not. the frontage. It was already created. So it doesn't need to be there. So that's just. But if it's held in common ownership, does it trigger the affordable No, file? because it predates. It's, well, first of all, even if it did, it's past the two-year uh, period. We have that two-year period. So once you've created those lots, you get a clean slate after two years, you can create more after that. I, I think it's a confusion. I'm, I'm sorry. We are all confused. We, we have nine lot plan. There is there is a separate 601R, which is the A and R separate. That, that, is a sep that has nothing to do with this uh, subdivision. It, and it's not it fed by this road. It was submitted to conservation as part of the subdivision. Resources. So what do we... And the... One second. Yeah. And the drainage plan for this subdivision is on that lot. So it necessarily needs to be included as lot nine. Either way, it will just be one, whether you include it or not, but it needs to be included as this subdivision, as lot eight, because it was reviewed by conservation as such. It's been shown on this plan, and it was created through this plan. Lot nine was already in existence. We can talk about it offline more if you want, but that lot nine, this is to your benefit, should be 577 South Street. So 577 South, South Street was always a 577 South Correct. Street. Correct, and that's what I'm agreeing with. That's why it shouldn't be lot nine. It was already there. I think the lot nine is opposite of the road. That's then we're going to have lot ten, and you owe us two. No, hang on. I think. I, <laughs> I mean, this is fine. You, you can go argue with that against yourself. No, I'm not. I'm not. We'll accept it. No, no I but I'm it. arguing in your favor. No, no, you are. But I just want to clarify. I think there is a confusion here. So okay. if I, but carry on. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe I'm confused. And this is an existing lot. So there is nine lot. Okay. So, uh, are you saying the lot nine is five seventy seven? No, it's not five. That's what he's saying. Five seven seven South five, Street. I, I just want to understand. I just looked it up on the GIS. Lot nine is five seven seven South Street. Okay. So just like you have across the street, you have NF. You have the name of the person, the address. I yeah. would do the same for this lot. Mm -hmm. And then just where it says six zero one R lot, just change it to lot nine okay. or lot eight, and then lot eight becomes That's lot fine. nine. Done. Okay. I, honestly, I'm not. I'm a little confused in here, but I do know that the six zero one R was like the. It, it is the ANR. 
it is not part of the subdivision. But what we did when when we were applying for conservation, when we had to do that conservation as well, right. so we lump it together as a. Uh, anyway, I don't so know. So it was in view, it was reviewed in its entirety by Graves and Conservation, including the great drainage on 601R as part of this subdivision. Well, the perimeter so is necessarily part of has the to be part of it. Yeah. The perimeter that was submitted is part of the subdivision. Correct. So this has to be part of it, and that lot was shown too on uh, I can't remember what sheet it is where the house is going to be in everything. So all the details have been submitted. So, but you know this better than I. I, I don't mean to. I, I'm just trying to understand. As long as, as long as, I don't mind changing the numbers. As long as, you know, if we would exclude that old lot which was 577 South Street. Correct. That's what then we are okay. That's it. Nothing else is I mean, I just engineering wise, technically, but we need that to change because we otherwise you go up to ten. But because because technically now I have. 10 houses to build because there are nine lot in subdivision and one outside of subdivision. Mm -hmm. Which is this? So I just, I don't want to, I don't know. You don't. Okay. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven around. Eight would be the 601R. Nine would be what is lot eight today. And then lot nine is not part of it. 577. Okay. Do we need a new plan? The lot numbers no, need to change. Nine. Otherwise, okay. we have this 10 is lots, not, is, is it, which is. How am I going to. Yeah, I think, I think yeah, it needs so to be continued continue. until. Yes, I think this needs to be continued until that is. And then GZA yeah, can work its way up. Right. Yeah. And everything's yeah. done. We don't need confusing um, conditions or anything. I'm uncomfortable with the. And we can talk offline. No, Correct. Right. Because well. this is going into. I don't want to. Yeah, it sounds like it's it's a clerical yes. situation, Somewhat. but it hey, sounds like you need to sit down and really discuss this out. So we have a draft decision in front of us that references a plan with meets and bounds and everything else. How are we going to approve that? That's still correct. It's just the plan needs to represent that. Well, he's not in position to do that. Right. Unless he's willing to build two affordable houses today, I'd approve it right now. So, <laughs> I mean, can I can I approach you just to no. clarify? Our Let's clarify offline. Right, I, I think okay. the board has enough business. Okay. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I okay. agree. I think this, to your point, Steve, it, it it's it, getting it can get muddy and it's not a terminal error. It's just something yeah. that needs to be corrected it's and clarified. Fix it. It's fix it by the right. next it's, meeting. I, I understand it's going to be a couple GZA more weeks. GZA will have fixed everything and. You guys will be good, you know. Yeah, I think we'll have an offline discussion. I'm a little confused about the lots. Yep. Yeah. Lots is very important because Unless you yeah. want to build two affordable houses. <laughs> I'm good with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the next one. Um, all right. So continue. Is that the? Yeah, I, I, I'm going to open it up to the public. Oh yes, of course. Uh, right. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone in the public that wishes to be heard? Yes. Please introduce yourself. My name is Fran Zaretti, 625 South Street. I'm going to butter for the property. <clears throat> Not to add more confusion, but 601R, I have an issue with that. Um, I don't believe it was an a and R lot. It was part of this subdivision. And I have an easement on that lot. <clears throat> I know that easements are civil issues. But um, the easement I have across that lot uh, was put there when I had the original property. And the house that was on that lot was formerly called Lot 13 in my a and plan. The house was approximately 400 feet away from the easement that connects my property to my other property. The proposal now on Lot 601R, which is now Lot 8 or 9, whatever you're going to call it, I have an exhibit here. The um, easement that I have is about three feet from the front of the foundation of the house. So I went from 400 feet to three feet. And the easement granted in Registry of Deeds, Book 59238, page 303, states that I have rights across a 15-foot wide easement on foot and with vehicles, including without limitation, with animals and farm equipment for access and egress for parcel A and other lot 10, other property I own. So <clears throat> also, the uh, easement uh, has a surface that it has to be either gravel, stone, stone dust, or similar materials, but not asphalt. So I have an exhibit here showing that. I'll give it to the board. But what I'm getting at is that 
I have an easement there that I use equipment, bulldozers, tractors, farm equipment that traverses from my house to my barn, and it's now two or three feet from the front door of the house. So in the back of the house, there's a 30-foot buffer zone of the no-build area levied by Conservation Commission. And to the left of the house is the drainage system easement where the detention ponds are. So if you look at where the house is now, it's squashed between three different areas, and I don't know how the people who buy this house is going to be able to put up with the fact that there's an easement and equipment right in their front door. I don't even know if the steps can be built on the house in order to be encroaching on the easement. Also, there's a septic tank put under the easement, which it has to be an H-20 loading if they do put the house there because it'll collapse when the equipment drives over there. So I just want to go on record now. It may be a civil matter later, but I'm trying to avoid that now because of the proximity where the house is. And if someone buys this under disclosure, that they're going to be realizing that there is an easement there and there's going to be equipment running at 7 o'clock in the morning, whatever the case may be. I just want to put it on record now and show you this exhibit and I'll give it to the board that I got an issue with that. And I don't want to have litigation later. I'm just trying to work this out now. I'm not against the project. I'm not for the project. I'm neutral. So I'm not a, a, a person that's against the project. But I have an issue on this particular lot that we're calling an a and lot as part of the property. Whatever it is, the easement now is in, in jeopardy of having issues later on down the road when I originally granted it, the house was 400 feet away. I'd like to give the board this. Okay, um, just for my curiosity, this, this hearing's been, now this is a new hearing, but this project has been in front of us for close to two years at this point. Um, this is the first time it's been brought to our attention, so is there a reason? This is the first time I saw that particular plan with that lot and that house where it's located. I think in previous plans it was not on it. And this is lot nine? Yeah, Mr. Rashid. It's all one hour, I believe, or whatever the number I'm is. I'm looking at. <laughs> Randy, I'm looking at a, a lotting plan of this used to call parcel A, Mr. Chair. It's on, she it's on sheet number 10. There's a diagram on the left-hand side showing the close-up of the... This creating utility plan? Is sheet number 10? Yeah, it's on the left-hand side where you can see it says South Street, and this shows one unit. Like a, yep. Where's the easement? It shows up earlier. I think on sheets. This is the easement right here, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. The easement's on the plan. It's in very light, light print. It is as much as detail. Okay. I mean, I would say to the board that as Mr. is ready made quite clear already as he knows is this is a private civil matter and I mean he can bring it to the board's attention and make a public statement but it's between him and or him and the applicant really where that house is located board. Mr. Chair yes. uh, it is a civil matter and honestly um, it's it's <laughs> it's 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 an amazing that uh, when I bought the land from Mr. Zoretti, and again, this is a civil matter. I don't think it really relates to you, but since he brought it up and when he sold me the land, he specifically said that he will move the you know easement when I make the lotting plan because I told them what I'm going to be doing. There are a lot more to it, um, you know, and and I just I, I it's amazing that he knows it for years and he's just bring it up today, uh, and this is. This discussion is really not even, and again, that's the reason I'm continuing, and I'll discuss that. That is a separate parcel, which was a parcel A, and now it's 601R, which is the NR. In my understanding, that that's not part of the subdivision. But anyway, I think that's what we do. We'll offline discuss and clarify. Okay. Right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? I'm continuing any. Right, we're continuing anyway. Yeah. Does anyone else in the audience wish to be heard? Okay, that will take a motion to continue the public hearing. I move that we continue the discussion on the Falcon Farms definitive subdivision plan until, was it, August 3rd? 4th. 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 Thursday, August 4th until 7 p.m. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. Just a second. We have another one. Oh. Is another one? Yes. So the next one. Um, 
Mr. Iliadi will be sitting in on this. So this is a new public hearing for Falcons Farms nine lot subdivision special permit inclusionary housing fee in lieu. How Seven. are we gonna consider this until he's reconciled the 10 or nine lots? Well, what we can do is we can open the public hearing and continue it and have a decision or have a discussion about it. If he doesn't when have, we have more clarity. he's gonna build this tool. Well, no, I'm, I'm convinced it's nine lots. He's just got the wrong lots. And same here. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. If you're not comfortable, then. Oh, I, I, I agree. I mean, we're going to continue the other one anyways. It's. Yeah. I think we How can we, we can open it? the meeting and then we can just fix continue it. it. Um, so. How you, I would fix it. <laughs> okay. So this is for Falcon Farms nine lot subdivision special permit inclusionary housing fee in lieu seven Shelty, uh, Cheryl Relty Trust, new public hearing for location 581, 583, and 587 South Street. Mr. Thomas, could you please read the public hearing? The Shoes Repairing Board, as a special permit granting authority, will hold a public hearing on Thursday evening, July 14th, 2022, at 7 p.m. in the Selectman's Hearing Room at the Richard D. County Municipal Office Building, 100 Maple Avenue, to hear the application of 7 Cheryl Realty Trust, 24 Cheryl Drive, Shrewsbury, Mass. 01545, as required by the Town of Shrewsbury, Zoning Bylaw Section 7K6A3, for a special permit to allow for a fee in lieu of providing one on-site inclusionary housing unit. Proposed development is shown on plans entitled Definitive Subdivision Falcon Farm South Street, dated January 31st, 2022, and revised on May 2nd, 2022, in 10 sheets prepared by the Velis Zrain Incorporated P.O. Box 307, Foxborough, Mass. 02035, sent by Imad A. Zrain, P.E., and Michael A. Puzatizi, P.L.S. The property is located southerly of Brook Street and northerly of South Street and consists in whole or in part of Shoes Recessor's Tax Plate 43. Plot 021003, tax plate, tax plate 43, plot 021009, tax plate 43, plot 021005, tax plate 43021004. Copy of the application and plans may be seen in the Office and Planning of the in the Office of the Planning and Economic Development Department at the Richard D. County Municipal Office Building, 100 Maple Avenue, Shoes Mass, and on the Planning Board website. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Um, as was mentioned, uh, where we have to continue the other hearing, um, rather than getting to this, let's get some clarity on what the number mm -hmm. may be any, in any event. And I think we can just have a discussion about this uh, at our next meeting. So unless you have anything that you would like to add, I, I'd entertain a motion to continue this public hearing. Good with I, you. I, I, with that. I particularly don't, other than, you know, just a strategic direction that this is the direction we are going in, that we were, you know, paying fee in lieu of the, the lot. It's a separate uh, issue as to how many lots you have to build or what the number would be. Right. Okay. I mean, if you so feel comfortable, you. that's fine with me. But yeah. I'm talking about the strategic discussion, right? If you think it's better, there is no doubt it's nine lots. Okay. It's not ten lots. Uh, it's just I want to clar clarify. It was ten, though. I'm sorry? It would show No, there, there is a separate parcel, and, and there is a confusion. We, we need to clarify the confusion. So that's why we need to continue this until the next time. Sure. You okay with that? Sure. Okay. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Mm. Okay. Then I, I would, uh, as the applicant has requested, I would uh, grant the applicant's uh, continuance on the uh, special permit request relative to the fee in lieu of uh, building the affordable unit. Do I have it? Potentially. To August. To August 3rd, Thursday, August 3rd, 4th, 4th, excuse me, Thursday, August 4th at 7 p.m. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. See you next month. Thank you. Okay, our next public hearing is another new public hearing. This is for the police station driveway alteration, site plan modification. Um, town of Shrewsbury, location 100 Maple Avenue. Mr. Thomas, please read the public notice. The Shrewsbury Planning Board will hold a public hearing on Thursday evening, July 14th, 2022, at 7 p.m. in the Selectman's Hearing Room at the Richard D. Kearney Municipal Office Building, 100 Maple Avenue, to hear the application of the Town of Shrewsbury, 100 Maple Avenue, Shrewsbury, Mass. 01545, so for site plan modification by the Planning Board as required by the Town of Shrewsbury Zoning Bylaw Section 7F3 to allow for the construction of an access driveway. Proposed development is shown on plans entitled 
alternate drive plans in three sheets dated August 19th, 2021 and revised on May 17th, 2022, prepared by Fuss and O'Neill Incorporated, 14550 Main Street, Suite 400, Springfield, Mass, 01103. The subject project is located at 100 to 150 Maple Avenue on the northerly side of Maple Avenue and consists in whole or in part Shrewsbury Assessor's Tax Plate 27, Plot 39100, and Tax Plate 21, Plot 101001. A copy of the application, plans, and reports may be seen in the Office of Planning and Economic Development Department at the Richard D. County Municipal Office Building, 100 Maple Avenue, Shrewsbury, Mass., and on the Planning Board website. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. The applicant, please introduce themselves. Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you for having us. Uh, my name is Matt Salad. I'm project manager for Tecton Architects. Um, I've been managing the police station project in its entirety. Um, and with me tonight is Dan Delaney and Jose, Josue Valdez uh, from Fuss and O'Neill. Um, and they have a brief presentation to go over the modifications to the previously approved site plan for the police station site. Um, and uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Josue. Oh, thank you, Matt. Um, So as Matt said, um, we are pretty much here um, to discuss the proposed um, site plan modification to the previously approved um, police department. Our agenda is just to do a quick overview of the previously approved design um, and then just um, show you what we are proposing and um, a brief explanation of the new stormwater being pieced um, to treat the stormwater. Um, in the first sheet, um, we can see the previously approved site plan. Um, with um, the proposed stormwater. Um, as we know, like, you know, most of the buildings are already constructed on site. Um, we can see the, the parking lots and everything. And then on the left top corner of the sheet, we can see where the proposed um, modification um, will be. In this other sheet, we can see how the proposed modification actually will, like, blend in into the previously approved site. Um, it consists on an alternate drive, um, asphalt pavement, and then um, a parking lot with 35 parking spaces. One of them is an accessible parking. It's going to be a gravel parking lot. Um, we will be um, also, or we are proposing a detention pond um, with a water quality unit um, to help mitigate and treat the stormwater runoff before it leaves the site. Um, this next sheet explains a little bit better how we are proposing to collect all the stormwater on site from the, like the extended limit of work, just to make sure that no additional stormwater is leaving the site untreated. And um, that's pretty much um, the, you know, the, the resume of, of what we are proposing on doing here. And, um, now, if you have any questions, um, we are happy to answer it. Okay. I'll start. Mr. Jerry, any questions or comments? No, I have none. I think it's pretty straightforward. Mr. Rodelikas? No, I'm just assuming that the groundwater that you guys encountered was higher than you anticipated, that necessitating this modification. No, uh, the, the, the purpose of this modification was that with the original design, we were providing a single point of egress for the actual police department side of the parking area, right. a secure parking lot. So the purpose of this was to, was to provide a secondary uh, drive out of the lot. A lot of the grading that you see around the drive itself, we're actually, we're actually using a little bit of the excess um, soil that's been retained on site from the initial project. It wasn't, it wasn't in part for drainage? No, it was not, it was not because of drainage. Yep. Okay, that's fine. I'm I'm fine with the secondary means of egress. So Thomas, I'm fine with it. So the additional parking spaces is that that was something that was brought up only for the simple reason that you have to have the you know, you're asking for an additional egress and you figured you would take advantage of this space because that not that wasn't part of the original proposal. Correct. Yeah. The, the the drive itself is specific to the police station project and the egress. The the parking spaces that are being created um, were to help offload some of the the parking issues that they have over at the ball fields. 
Okay. So, so right that, park, in, that parking field is in, in, is expected to be used for Outside. residents as they're accessing oh. the, um, yep. not yeah, necessarily for additional parking for the police department. Not for the police department. The parking is specifically just for the public to, to use in the park area. Okay. It's outside the security fence. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's our point. so it's out. Yeah. So it's outside right. of so the secured no. area that the, no. that was already approved. Yep. yep. Exactly. Okay. Is there any questions or comments from the town side of things? Um, I did not have any. I thought they did a good job answering yeah. our questions that we did have. So I don't have anything. I think it's a good benefit to the town to have some additional parking. If you've seen Saturday's soccer yeah. there and the overflow and people parking all over the grass and everywhere else. Um, I think once that gets built, I think that'd be a benefit. So, will, will there be some sort of a gate or signage at the end of so, this so that people going to the baseball game don't? So, there is going to be a um, chain. Um, I don't know if you, if you go here. Maybe you can see the two Between bollards the on, the, on yeah. the driveway. Okay. So, the driveway is going to be with a chain, pretty much. It's going to be chained, it's going to be locked. But the parking is going to be open. Right. Okay. So, there's not going to be any. So, this won't be open around the clock this would just be for special purposes yeah so the the basic purpose is that if there's ever an incident on maple ave that blocks the police from egressing off of the yep. site this gives them a, an emergency way out um also uh if you look at the grading plan there is that, that little bit of grade on either side of the drive that's yep. a, that's a two and a half foot tall just grass berm just to give a little bit of a buffer yep. and protection from anybody yep. sort of driving yep. through it and over it yeah it's actually almost three feet so you yeah it's, it'll give you like a good Okay. Um, any other questions or comments from the board? Okay. This is a public hearing. Is anyone in the public that wishes to be heard? Seeing no hands, I'll entertain a motion to close the public I hearing. I move that we close the public hearing on the 100 and, uh, 150 Maple Avenue uh, site plan modification. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Being said, we do have a draft decision in front of us. Uh, is there any questions or comments relative to the draft decision? Mr. Jeff. I have none. Mr. Rodelakis. I have none. Uh, Mr. Thomas. I have none. And I have none either. I will entertain a motion on the draft decision. Yeah, I threw it in my Falcon form. I move that uh, we uh, authorize the clerk to execute the Decision entitled Decision of the Planning Board regarding application for site plan modification 100 and 150 Maple Avenue, Shrewsbury Police Station, Town of Shrewsbury. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Our next public hearing is another new public hearing. Uh, Mr. Thomas will be recusing himself. This is for a proposed four unit multifamily development site plan approval and special permit, Lakeway Realty LLC, location 55 to 66 South Quinsigamond Avenue. Uh, Mr. Jerry, please read the public notice. The Shrewsbury Planning Board, as the special permit granting authority, will hold a public hearing on Thursday evening, July 14th, 2022, at 7 p.m. in the Selectman's Hearing Room at the Richard D. Carney Municipal Office Building, 100 Maple Avenue, to hear the application of Lakeway Realty, LLC, 48 Harrington Avenue, Shrewsbury, Mass., 01545, as required by the Town of Shrewsbury Zoning Bylaw, Section 7F3 and Section 6, Table 1, for site plan approval and special permit by the Planning Board to allow for the construction of four townhouse-style dwelling units. The proposed development is shown on plans entitled Site Plan for 56 to 66 South Quinsigaman Avenue on 11 sheets dated June 13, 2022, prepared by J. M. Grenier Associates Incorporated. 118 Turnpike Road, Suite 200, South Row, Mass, 01772. Stamped by Kevin J. Jarvis, PLS, and John M. Grenier, PE. The subject property is located westerly of the intersection of Villa Road and South Quinsigamond Avenue and consists in whole or in part of Shrewsbury Assessor's Tax Plate 38, Plot 003000. A copy of the application, plans, and reports may be seen in the Office of the Planning and Economic Development Department 
at the Richard D. Carney Municipal Office Building, 100 Maple Ave, Shrewsbury, Mass., and on the Planning Board website. Thank you, Mr. Jerry. Second, please introduce themselves. Thank you to the Chair and, and members of the Board. Um, for the record, my name is Richard Ricker. I'm, I'm the attorney representing the applicant, and um, uh, my offices are at 11 Maple Avenue. I'm here with uh, Tom Paquette, who is uh, principal and the manager of, of the LLC applicant. Uh, Lakeway and also John Grenier is to my left. He is our engineer. Uh, this is a fairly straightforward um, proposal uh, calling for the uh, removal of uh, one building and um, the uh, building of uh, two additional buildings with four units. So we're, we're removing two units and adding four. Um, and um, I think with respect to that, uh, John, if you would just go through the plan. Sure. Um, uh, this site is located South Route 9 on South Consignan Avenue. It's um, just under an acre. Um, as Richard stated, there's five units currently on the site. There's a duplex that is tucked right up against South Consignan Avenue. That two family is going to get raised. There is uh, an existing uh, single unit located in the middle here, and then, I'm sorry, that's a two, that's two units, and then uh, number 60 is, is another two units. Two units, two units. Two units. Number yep. 60 is two, and 60 number 58, is, two and 58 is, one. is one. So um, what we are proposing to do, as I said, is to raise the unit that's located right, right along the frontage on South Queen Sigmund Ave. Uh, we'll keep the other three units and then add two uh, townhouse style uh, units in the back. So the net increase is two units total on the site. Um, in order to provide adequate access and parking, uh, we are maintaining the existing access on South Quinsigna Ave Avenue, which is pretty much directly across from Villa Road. Um, we are reconfiguring and maintaining but reconfiguring the parking um, that services the existing units in this location uh, right along the frontage and there's a, a walkway that leads from that parking to those existing units and then for the additional units that we're building basically we're providing two parking spaces for each unit so we have two parking spaces associated with unit seven two for number six two for number five two for number four um, and we provide a 20-foot wide access drive to come into the site. Um, that necks down a little bit for the, for the last unit. We did sit down with the deputy fire chief to make sure he was fine for um, access and egress through the site. Um, so we have correspondence with the deputy fire chief, um, and he's comfortable with, with the layout and the access and the width of the, the driveway that accesses the units. Um, we did get comments from Graves Engineering. Um, in, in general, they're fine with the drainage. The drainage that we are proposing is to um, capture basically everything sheet flows um, away from South Queen Sigmund. Uh, the lowest spot is down in this corner, and we're sheet flowing the, the water down into um, catch basin structure. Again, we're treating the water and then uh, we're recharging into the ground. There was some fill in this area, but below that there was some decent soils, but there is quite a bit of fill that was placed on this site. So we're gonna be digging that out and installing um, a series of subsurface recharge chambers. Um, there was a, um, a question from the planning department about um, providing some additional overflow parking spaces. Um, we do provide adequate parking spaces based on zoning. Um, and if it's the wish of the board, I know we're going to have a meeting in, in a few weeks. Um, we went through the comments. We have uh, looked at ways that we can address that. Across from the parking that's associated for the existing units, we could also add four parking spaces uh, for overflow for, for visitor spaces if that's uh, if that's something you want. If, if that's the, the wish of the board. Um, another area, another comment, I think it was from Graves actually, um, was for delivery vehicles, whether it's, I don't know, you get a UPS truck, you get an Amazon truck. 
um, to have a if people are in these existing park or in the proposed parking spaces um, to give them an area to turn around and we have adequate area right in this central part where if they came in they could do a three-point turn and get out and um, not have to rely on having one of the parking spaces open from one of the units um, there is um, in terms of buffering from properties uh, there's the condos that are uh, to the south and to the west there's um, condo number 68 right here that's a multi-unit building they're quite a bit lower than us there's a retaining wall there they have very thick evergreens um, on top of a retaining wall and then there's an existing six foot high uh, fence that that surrounds the entire property so in terms of screening from other properties we really don't have an issue with that and then adjacent to us at the north is the, the parking lot for the, the Lithuanian club so that's one big huge parking lot so we don't have any issues with screening from abutters there so um, we are doing some um, screening within the site to screen the driveway from units two and three and each unit will have its own post lamp just residential style you know nothing commercial in terms of lighting it'd just be six foot high lamp posts so very residential in style um, that's really the long and short of it at the end of the day we're adding two units um, really improving the property uh, formalizing some of the parking that's associated with these units and um, getting rid of an, a, a non-conforming structure that's located really right on top of South and Sigmund Ave so we think overall it's a real good improvement to the property he's upgrading his property and uh, going to be building just nice affordable units on the site so that's it Affordable meaning that they'll be considered. We're not into Right, right. units. Let's not go down that road. <laughs> no, we're only adding two. <laughs> two we'll affordable units. <laughs> if I could approach it, and, and uh, because um, I know you like to see what uh, your elevations are going to be like, as opposed to uh, the neighboring units. I appreciate that. I told you, you're going to be the gold standard. We did a, um, <laughs> we did a survey. Uh, Tom did the survey. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Of the surrounding properties, and you can see that uh, the, the heights of the proposed uh, um, units are within a couple of feet, basically, of uh, everything around them. So um, I would suggest, therefore, respectfully, that it's in keeping with the neighborhood. Yeah. And, and as John said, this is a, a, a vast improvement to this, this parcel. And, and if you want that visitor parking spaces, then we would put them in and hope uh, that you would approve the plan in the next meeting. Okay. Um, is that all you have? I was going to ask the board if they, any That's questions. Um, Mr. Jerry, any questions or comments? I have none. Mr. Rodalakis. No, I agree with Mr. Ricker. I, you know, I either walk or drive and or both by this property every day. And I think removal of the structure on the road will be a big improvement. It's a big site, the addition of two units. It, it's a site that can easily absorb it. And I know that Mr. Paquette has uh, shown that uh, he's done a good job in the past. And I trust he'll do a good job with this. Very good. Uh, there was a conversation I had with the uh, town planner regarding uh, the parking, uh, not necessarily the additional parking, but potential for uh, handicap parking. Is that something? So it's a question that came up. It was actually raised by um, DPW and the director of DPW actually raised it. And uh, you're welcome to either clarify it tonight or not, whether they're going to be renter ownership. It's going to be rental. Um, so the, the understand, this is, I am not the, um, uh, whatever you call it, um, accessibility person yeah. in town so yeah. um so i put the comment in there um you can either address it tonight or both in writing back to us in the letter i would um, i would about whether yeah. ha handicapped spaces are required for rental units so no that's okay you can disagree yeah. if you could just put that in writing back to us i think that would be appreciated and i can share that with the people who brought it up in town okay but i haven't found anything that requires it i can okay. tell you that and that would yeah. be wouldn't that be an issue for the building department too in terms so yeah, that was one of the, they brought back. it up as well. So a few people brought it up. So we could approve it, and if he had to come back because they wouldn't issue a building permit, we could make a. a, a we don't want to see a delay, though. It's a result yeah. of that. So I'll 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 work it out uh, between now and the next meeting. I'll, I'll we, make sure we, that we, we can approve. It. We could approve it, and if he had to come back because they didn't issue a building permit, they wouldn't. We could do a de minimis change. He's got more than enough area in that site to right. 
absorb a couple of parking spaces. I, I agree, but I, I think it's probably more efficient if, if I address it with the building department um, tomorrow and, uh, and, yep. and just get this thing wrapped up. So, Mr. Chairman, I'm only waiting on the response to the planner comments and Graves comments and otherwise, um, and, and I brought up the issue in my comments about the visitor parking only because yeah. it's been raised by the board members before um, for other sites. So it's up to so the only real uh, four of you to discuss that. I, I just wanted to bring it up. Andy? I'm, I'm perfectly in line with having the additional parking uh, for the overflow, especially um, where it is somewhat limited in front of the um, structures themselves. So to have a little bit extra space off to the side for, for overflow parking, I think would be... Four parking spaces? Yeah. Are you okay with four parking spaces? I think four would be fine. You think four? It's fine if it's required. Otherwise, I'd be okay with closing and approving, and he could come back if there was an issue with. Well, well gonna, we don't have responses we, yet. To we, we're gonna, we can't right. close today, anyways. Oh, we're we can't continue. close no, today. No, we're going to continue. Anyways. We don't have responses. We don't have responses yet. No. Mm. In, in the meantime, um, from us. I don't have yeah. the planner responses or the responses to Graves. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, we, we made the changes, mm -hmm. and then I wasn't sure if we should be submitting them, you know, a couple of days before. Yeah. So we said. It's three weeks to the next meeting. So three weeks. Yeah. And we still have to get the, uh, the decision written up. Okay. Yeah. I have it mostly That's drafted fine. already. Let's figure it out. These final. Okay. So, so we we'll get, so we get the responses, the we deal with the handicapped issue, and, and yeah, we wrap it up. That can all get resolved by August 3rd, right? Yes. Absolutely. August 4th, okay. Steve. Four. August 4th. <laughs> yep. Four. You're going to be here on the 3rd and no one else. I'll be here on the 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th. Yep. Just yep. so I don't miss anything. Um, okay. Thank um, Unless there's any other comments. Any other comments? This is a public hearing. Is anyone in the public that wishes to be heard? Not seeing any hands. I want to a motion to continue the public hearing. I move that we continue the public hearing on the site plan of approval and special permit for multifamily townhouse of 55 through 66 South Quinsigaman Avenue until uh, August 3rd, Thursday, August 3rd, 2022 at 7 p.m. 4th. 4th. August 4th. 4th. I said that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I have a second. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank, you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Our next public hearing is a continued public hearing for a proposed collision center site plan approval, MAG RE Holdings, 800 Boston Turnpike, a location 420 Boston Turnpike. Uh, we have another request for continuance. Um, does anybody have any questions or comments relative to the continuance request? Anybody have any problem with continuing? No. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. I move we grant the request of the applicant for the continuance for 420. Uh, Boston Turnpike until Thursday, August 4th, 2022, at 7 p.m. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And our final public hearing is a continued public hearing for one Greenbrier Road, over 55 housing development, site plan approval and special permit, Cypress Avenue Development, LLC, location one Greenbrier Road and 169R Gulf Street. I also have a request for continuance for this project. Does anybody have questions or comments relative to the continuance request? I have none. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to continue this public hearing. I move that we uh, grant the continuance as requested by the applicant for the Greenbrier Cypress Ave uh, project until Thursday, August 4th, 2022 at 7 p.m. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That takes care of all of our open hearings. Our next item of business is a new business. Discuss and vote on issuance of bond for 800 Turnpike. I'm sorry, 800 Boston Turnpike. I have a bond here in the amount of $3,401.13. And this is for Citiva. Does anybody have any questions or comments relative to that? No. Okay, entertain a motion. I move that we authorize the bond for Sativa of, uh, oh. in the amount of $3,401.13 relative to 800 Boston Turnpike. Does anybody, uh, do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And our final item on the new business is to endorse the planning board member appointment confirmation sheet. 
going to pass this around. If you could just sign your name next to your written name, I'd appreciate it. And also, Mr. Chairman, if there could be a motion to um, appoint the town engineer as the approver for A and R plans. Um, I move that we authorize uh, the delegation of the uh, town engineer to execute the A and R plans where he feels appropriate. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Because otherwise, if he doesn't feel it's appropriate, he should come to us. Definitely. <laughs> okay. If you want more to do. No, I, I, no I'm just kidding. There have been instances yeah. where in the past, I'm not saying under this engineer or the prior that uh, we kind of scratched our heads. It's like. I'm sure Mr. Truman will tell you if he needs to bring it, if he's got an issue. <laughs> he's not one too shy away. Mr. Eliotti's name is on that list. He doesn't have to be on the. No, he's on is. the bottom of it. Oh, it is. Okay. Well, Tino can do it. Perfect. Keep throwing the guy on the bus tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you for um, um, With that, that, I'll entertain a motion to conclude this hearing. I yes. move that we conclude this evening's public hearings. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bernie. Thank Thanks, you. everyone.